made from cobblestones, laid by hand centuries ago. There are 22 cobblestone sections between here and Roubaix. Some are as short as a few hundred yards, most are a mile or two long. Every rider knows what the cobblestones mean. The brutal, physical pounding accompanied all the way by the risk of being involved with a crash or having your bike break or perhaps getting a flat tire. But the rough road offers something else, something very special, a chance to prove your grit and determination. Chance to show how tough you really are. The cobblestones have humbled most of the riders who have ridden over them. They've made a few heroes, too. But one thing is for sure. When you get here, you have to make up your mind. Defend your position or attack. 63 miles into the race, approaching the outskirts of Troisville, where the cobblestones begin, the pack was still tightly bunched. No breakaways yet. Sean Kelly, the Irishman who had twice been the winner of this race, made a move and rode to the front. It was exactly as he had planned it. Well, the, the plan is to go on to the first cycle of cobbles in the first 10, 10 riders, 15 riders. That's what you have to do because there's so many crashes in the first two or three cycles of cobbles. Uh, you know, if you're behind, well, then you get caught up in, in, in those crashes and you don't come back. It's, it takes such an effort, you pay for it in the end, definitely. The cobblestones dead ahead. As the pack funnels onto the narrow road, most riders shift to a higher gear, thus pedaling at somewhat lower RPM. The idea being better control. The bikes are fitted with tires that have oversized sidewalls to cushion the impact of the cobble. Handlebars are thickly padded to reduce the vibration in the rider's arm. The faster you ride the cobblestones, the smoother they seem, but the greater is the risk that something will go wrong. like this you build landmarks into your mind simply stated something like this when i reach there i want to be here evidently the peloton was even in their thinking when i reach the church at viesley i want to be in the pack there are relatively few dropouts compared to previous years when mud and dust made carnage the operative word Now in the town of Solem, a landmark in the rider's mind for food and for drink. Only possible if you can find your team helpers in the blur of people that line the road. Approaching the halfway mark, a Frenchman, Jean-Claude Calotti, makes his move. Everyone had been waiting for the break, and this was it. The number of seconds that favored Colotti was 40. The number of things that could go wrong was impossible to count. Seconds behind this bold and maybe foolish move, Laurent Fignon experienced a simple flat tire. Expect mishaps, but minimize their effect. In instances like this, a cyclist may be saved by a freelance tire supplier who cruises the course. A move like this should take only nine, maybe 10 seconds. This one was agonizingly long. The catch-up to the pack would be equally tough. Some French cycling fans have said Fignon hasn't been tough enough for races like this. Now his chance to prove them wrong. into and out of the city of Valenciennes. 15 cobblestone sections to go. Now past the midway point, and the race finally had a leader, and he had company. Jean-Claude Colotti, 51st last year, and now Sean Yates, 
the Englishman on the American 7-Eleven team. Yates loves to ride in front and in so doing, captured a stage of the Tour de France a year ago. The chase was being applied by a group that was without stars, but with hard workers, like Frenchman Duclos LaSalle, second place six years ago, number 91, and Jean-Marie Bumpers, number 58, a Belgian trying to postpone the end of his undistinguished career. Up in front, Yates and Colotti played their game until Colotti raised his hand and called for a conference. Perhaps Colotti had abandoned his duties as a supporting player somewhere many miles ago. Perhaps he was having his greatest day. Either way, the strategy was in place for the most famous stretch of Pave, the one through the Arenberg Forest, lined by thousands of fans and treacherous to the dreams of many in the 86 Harry roubaix races before. Now, the race has been the safest in recent memory, perhaps lulling the riders into a false sense of security. And this crash comes not on the cobblestones where you might expect it, but on smooth pavement. Dag Otto Lauritsen is involved. An elbow injury will end his day. Stephen Roach's challenge is over, too, before his strategy has had a chance to unfold. the pack in a split second has become a track and as Yates and Kaladi race toward the Arenberg forest a wave of caution spreads through the pack behind them the Arenberg forest road is open but one day a year this one and thousands seize the opportunity to grab what they consider to be the prize place to view the race still led by Kaladi and Yates they arrive hours before to view the event, and the event sends them home as it passes in seconds. The road is almost perfectly straight, but it might as well be a labyrinth for confusion reigns. Yates was not as lucky, puncturing both tires, then falling trying to catch up. Today, the numbers 7 and 11 would be unlucky. The race left Sean Yates behind. Meanwhile, the group of one-time skeptics in the chase were now optimists. Pilotti was slowing down. A minute behind Mario, a second pack comprised of riders who are beginning to wonder if they've waited too long to make their move. Now Lauren Fignon wobbles in the mud and helplessly goes down, his legs like rubber after being forced to ride back into contention from three flats. Realizing this isn't to be his day, the scholarly looking Fignon decides this is one test he won't pass. 